Well, hello. I'm Kate McKinnon. Let's make a tri-wing ring. This is a piece built on our belly band, modified right angle weave, which we call MRA, and it's from the book Contemporary Geometric Beadwork. We get started, as we do with all of our belly bands, with a pickup of four beads. What we're doing is basically right angle weave. We call it MRA because it's modified right angle weave, but it starts the same way that uh, all RA does. What you want to do is take four beads and join them into a circle and then ideally to get your tail opposite your working thread you'll pass through the first bead that you put on. Now I leave a tail that's both long enough to hold into and also long enough to weave into the finished work so for me you know that's somewhere between four and six inches. I am working with Nymo B in the beautiful shoe red color from the three ounce cone and this is a strong elegant upholstery thread you can use any beading thread that you enjoy for this now <clears throat> we start out with one unit of four beads which is again traditional right angle weave and when you're doing raw in the usual way what you do is you add three beads at a time because of course you've always got one to hook into to make up your fourth unit and so you'll generally start from this direction or this direction in a side bead to make a chain and you'll put on three beads in a series of moves that go in opposite directions. One of the advantages to our stitch is that not only do you get the uh, benefit of a peyote round by adding spacers, but you can always go in the same direction. Let me show you how it works. I'm passing up through that handy right hand bead ignoring the spacer completely and then I am going through the top bead to get the effect of a second unit of a cross of four with a spacer in between them. This spacer is the first bead in my peyote round. Now this is pretty nifty. Pick up the spacer, ignore it completely, proceed on as before going up through the side bead bypassing the spacer see how I'm holding these beads they can't get away going across through the top bead to make a third unit of four right? so I'm adding one spacer ignoring it entirely passing up through the right hand side bead bypassing the spacer and going through the top bead in the unit. So this is really all there is to it and it marches along with really very little effort on your behalf. It it seems like you're getting a lot of beadwork for the effort expended and in fact you are. Now one thing that you'll want to do is to bypass the spacer in exactly the same way each time. If you consistently go in front of it be consistent. Do that every time. If you jump around, it'll affect your tailoring. Another thing that I do is I be sure that my thread is snug at all times. I like to maintain a nice tension when working this stitch. There's nothing like a nice sturdy belly band. But there's also nothing like a soft sloppy one. Hard to build on. So keep it tight, keep it snug, and then you may find it helpful to sort out your beads as you go to make sure that they're all soldiered up. It's easier to fix problems as they occur rather than wait until later. Now, I'm going to add a few more beads and then I'll be right back with you when we're ready for our second round. Well, hello again. You can see that I am now almost finished with my band. I've planned for three sets of seven blue beads with three gold spacers in between them and I am missing one blue spacer from this right hand side and one gold spacer at the join. Since the way that we join takes two spacers to do it, I'm going to show you the whole process. The first thing that I'm going to do before I begin the join is I'm going to pass back through the last section of right angle weave added. Not the spacer, just the raw, the orange beads. And the reason that I'm doing this is just, I don't know, makes it easier. 
If the beads are flopping around when you're trying to make the join, it's simply one more thing to think about. I always feel that if you know what you're going to do, you should let your materials know too so that they can cooperate. So this is what I'm doing. No twist in the band. And I'm going to use this bead right here and join it with this bead right here, which is the same matching unit on the other side. So I'm going to pick up the next bead in line, which is a spacer, a blue spacer, and then the top bead of this final raw unit, and I'm going to pass down through the end bead in the first section added. Now you can, you know, take your time with this. No one's rushing you. Now, you can see that I have only one more orange bead to add to complete this joining unit of right angle weave. And I'm going to go ahead and complete the stitch by passing back through, not the spacer, but the top bead. And then when I add the gold spacer, the round will be complete. Pretty nifty, huh? Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a pass back through that joining unit, because I can. And then I'm also going to take a reinforcing pass through all of the beads in the top row. Be right back. Done. And now I'm going to needle over to the other side of the band by passing through the right angle weave. And it doesn't really matter what direction you're going as long as you're following the thread path. If you don't like going up, just turn it over. You're going down. It's as simple as that. Now I'm going to, using regular peyote stitch, add one yellow bead in every space on the other side of this right angle weave band and then I'm going to reinforce that round as well. Now I've completed the add of yellow beads on the other side of the belly band and I am ready to lay in another round of beadwork. What I plan to do now is place one yellow bead between each of these blue beads, step up, and then begin the next round in which I'll place my increases. I'm now ready to add the last bead of the yellow round and because it is, in fact, the last bead of the round, I'll be passing through two beads to step up. Now, I'm ready to place the next round and I'm going to begin with regular peyote and then every time I come to a place where I have one of the three gold marker beads that I placed for convenience. I didn't need to put them there, but who wants to count? So anytime I come to one of these three marker beads, I'm going to go ahead and place two beads. And these two beads will be the base of an end to belly stack. As you can see in the finished tri-wing, these beads stack up two by two by two. As long as you like, it won't change the inner band size. And the peyote climbs the ladder of the increases. So right now, by placing these two beads right here, I've begun the base of my first end of belly increase. So I'm going to continue around this band, either placing single blue beads or, in these, these remaining two instances, sets of two. And now I am ready to place my last blue bead of this round, which of course means I will be stepping up to get on top for the next round. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is that if you don't like the place at which you're stepping up to the next round, it's kind of like not liking where you're standing in the room. All you have to do, if you would like to step up in a different place, is simply walk over there. If you don't like that place, keep going. You can choose to step up in the middle of a round if that's easier for you, or always right before the rib. Uh, it just doesn't matter in the slightest. Now, this is what we do when we get to one of these points of increase. 
and I place a bead kind of climbing the ladder which will increase the count on each side by one per side in between the increases and then when it's time to place beads at this space what you'll do is pick up two beads on your needle and they go in between the two beads that were added in the last stitch and so the result of this is a pretty little stack of two which will again be the base for your ribs your wings, your horns, your everything now my job is to place yellow beads in between each of these spaces and while there were seven blue beads in the last round there will be eight yellow beads in between these two and in fact that's a great way to keep track if you're just learning is to count out the number of beads that you'll need for the round put them on your tray in front of you and when those beads are gone you have in fact finished your side or your round or however many beads you've counted out so I've placed one on I have seven left to go and I'm going to place yellow beads here two gold beads on each of these points and come around and finish here and I will be right back and now I am ready to place the last yellow bead of this round and so this is going to be a step up of two and you can either pass through two beads at once or do them one at a time whatever is convenient for you and the way you hold your needle now you can see my tension is pretty snug but my piece is still flexible I've got a nice ring band and uh, this particular count came out to be about a size oh, between a six and a half and a seven depending on how you count and I think that you could just build wings on this as high as you like. I generally go up about mm, four or five increases and then finish with a point round, uh, often of size 15 round beads. So the other side, same thing, you can build increases in wings if you like, or you can just finish it off as this is a completely useful band as is. So uh, to recap, what I'll be doing as I continue this piece as high as I wish to continue it, is I will be adding one bead don't forget that little space right under the ridge right? one bead in each side space and I will be adding two beads on top of each herringbone add and again don't forget that little space under the rib and when you're first learning to do these increases, whether they're in flat triangles or tri-wing rings, these are the beads that are easiest to miss. And that's why it can be helpful to actually count out the beads that you know you're going to need, which in this round is going to be nine per side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if you know you need nine, you might want to get nine out. That way you know what you're going to do. So that's really all there is to it made an MRA band, filled in each side of it, placing increases, go as high as you like, and then ornament the edge with round beads as you like. Enjoy!